Ah, but that's a briefly overview the uh, Chinese history. Okay, because uh, I'm not sure you know everybody uh, familiar with the Chinese history a lot. That because uh, everybody know Ch China has a very long history. So most of the time when we talk about Confucius, talk about Mencius, talk about uh, Taoism, uh, Zhuangzi, talk about Han Fei, Xunzi, okay, and we will pretty soon we will also talk about uh, Moism, and we already uh, uh, talk about Sunzi, okay, the legal, uh, not legal, the 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 military uh, philosopher, okay, they all happen during this time. Okay, that's a, I just roughly put it up around 500 to 300 BC. Okay, that's so-called the hundred schools of thought. They have many, many different kinds of uh, philosophers and different kinds of ideas. They argue each other. That's why we always introduce this area. So after around like 200 BC, uh, the Qin Dynasty, one of the feudal lords, unite the China. They can, he conquered the entire China. So he built, that's the first time China become a uh, united country. So, but his dynasty only lasts for 15 years. So after that, okay, we got the long about 400 years, a so-called Han Dynasty. Okay, in Han Dynasty basically separate uh, around, you can use around the central era, okay, the zero uh, as uh, the first century as the midpoint. So the first 200 years, we call it the Western Han. Then the other 200 years we call the Eastern Han. Okay, the story is they have some, uh, something happened during that time. But basically, we all consider the Han Dynasty. That's a long time. That's why at the beginning, when Mark asked about the why 92% of Chinese are Han people, yeah, that's because the Han Dynasty is the first uh, stable, long lasting, united uh, nation. So that's a Han dynasty. Even Qin is the first one, but it only lasts for 15 years. So that's the Han dynasty lasts for 400 years. Uh, two weeks ago, Pin talked about the, uh, the old of uh, uh, Red Cliff. Okay. And the, that one, we talk about the uh, uh, Romans of Three Kingdom, the story of Three Kingdom. That's the end of Han dynasty because the country start to break to, into three different kingdoms. That's the story of the Romans of three kingdoms. That's a Wei, Su, Wu, three uh, basics. You have the three kingdoms okay, uh, during that time. And that time probably lasts for 50 years. And uh, they have a short, very short uh, united country, but turn out for the next, I will say over 300 years, the China has never united for, for long this period of time. We call it the Wei Jin period. Okay, that's in this paper. Okay, the scholar, the author, keep talking about the Wei Jin, uh, near uh, Taoism. So he is mentioning this period of time. Okay, this is about three hundred years because during this time, China is not one country; it's many country, and the the the, the history during this time is very complex, and it, it requires. Uh, specialists to understand because they have the north, they have the south, sometimes they have the east, west, and the, and the different foreigner invading, and uh, that's a complex history. But uh, on, on the uh, philosophy side, philosophical side, you know, generalize, we can generalize this kind of thinking is the so-called Xuan Xue or so-called uh, Neo-Taoism. Okay, we will talk about this one later. And after this, they have this very short period we call the Sui and the Tang. That's also famous dynasty. It lasts for about um, 300 years. That's the Tang dynasty. Okay. And during this time, you will know, it's also the, um, uh, I think it's um, um, uh, Islamic okay, kingdom, okay, a Muslim kingdom also grow up during this time. So Tang dynasty have the context with the uh, Western through the uh, Arabian, uh, Arabian world. Okay, so because the Muslim uh, empire start to uh, uh, going up. And during that time, the famous uh, Bud uh, Buddhist, uh, the, uh, Buddhist uh, philosopher, uh, scholar, uh, Xuan Zhang, uh, visit in, uh, uh, India. And the comeback bring a lot of the 
uh, Buddhism Sutra, and that's the uh, start of the, a lot of translation. And during this time, the Chinese language, in my opinion, Chinese language start to change because the Chinese start to borrow a lot of the Buddhism term, and, the, and the, the term has been used until today. So that's why I also consider uh, Buddhism is also important Chinese uh, philosophy. And many times we also introduce uh, the Buddhism thinking during that. That's happened during around the 600 uh, CE. Okay. So after Tang Dynasty, then they will come with a period so called the Song Dynasty. That's a very famous dynasty. And Song Dynasty also lasts for about three, four hundred years and then ended with the uh, 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 Genghis Khan's okay, invasion, okay, the Mongolian invasion, and the basic uh, China lost the country being part of the uh, Mongolian Empire, the, the super empire. Okay, so this one on, uh, in China only lasts for 100 years and come with Ming Dynasty. So the, the author also put this one as a Song Ming period or Song Ming Neo Confucianism. Okay, it's a very general term. You can see the the period is very long, it's about six, 700 years. Okay, and the, during this, I have the uh, a discontinuity okay, of the Yuan, so-called the Yuan Dynasty, which is Mongolian occupation. So this long period of time also generalized as call it the Song Min, Neo Confucius. And if you go a little bit detailed, they probably have a lot of things going on, but you know, today as we just do the, general comparison. So we just generally call this period as a Song Ming area. Okay. And then after Ming, that's a Qin Dynasty and that's another 300 years, which is, uh, we can call it a, a Manchurian, which is kind of close to Korean. And then at that time, uh, it's not Han people. That's also considered foreign invasion. So the, uh, the dynasty is very stable, unlike the Yuan dynasty only lasts for 100 years. The Qing dynasty lasts for another 300 years. Then, and you know the story, at the end, they have the Dr. Sun Yuxian revolution, then they have Mao Zedong, you know, that's, that's come to today. So that's the very brief, okay? I call it the briefer history of the, a brief history of the Chinese, Chinese a brief Chinese history. So, so when you read the paper, you got the idea in your timeline. Timeline, you have idea, you know, uh, what's going on in the, uh, this period of time. So, any question? Anybody want to? Uh, no question. Everybody fine with this one. So I think Pin talked about the history of the Chinese philosophy. I kind of like uh, review it and then uh, make another briefer version of the uh, history of the Chinese philosophy. Uh, philosophy. So let's make it uh, kind of like a review. So if you, that slide we see the, uh, the history of Chinese, uh, Chinese history. And this, this slide, let's see what's the major uh, philosophy going on in different period of time. Okay. So first uh, you will see in the so-called the spring old and the autumn warring state, that's about 500 to uh, 200 BC. That's the uh, so-called the Hanjui school. And we know that we, most of the time, and even today when uh, the Western world even in East in Asia, around the world, when you talk about Chinese philosophy, usually people will talk about Confucius, Mencius, Han Fei, Sun Tzu. They all in this time. Okay. So after the Han Dynasty, which about uh, two, 200 BC to 280, uh, that time, if you have to put the philosophy thinking, that time use a very simple way to describe, usually it's naturalism, mystical, Confucianism, okay, that's all this kind of thinking going on. That's during that time. And that's also during the time. I also picked the key uh, philosopher to represent. And I cannot think about the person around this time. So I think Dong Zhong Su could be the one. He is the prime minister. And then he uh, suggests the government unite the philosophical thinking. So he set up the school 
and the school only teach uh, Confucius uh, teaching. And uh, from, not, from that time uh, to next 2000 years, Confucius uh, thinking become the orthodoxy uh, teacher in uh, Chinese. So next period is remember in the history after finish the uh, uh, Han Dynasty, that's the Three Kingdom, then that's the Wei Jin period. So basics that start with the Neo Taoism. Okay. So a few people, Wang Bi, okay, who is the first commentator on the uh, famous uh, Lao Zi, Dao De Jing. And they also have the seven sages in the bamboo group. Uh, that's the time, you know, uh, different thinking. I will have more uh, information after the uh, uh, later, but uh, that's the so-called neo neo Taoism. Then after neo Taoism, that's the Tang uh, Tang Dynasty, which is Buddhism coming. Xuanzang. I, I just have picked randomly picked one. So after Tang, that's the Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty basics this we can call the neo uh, in the uh, this paper. The author called the neo Confucianism. Confucianism. But if you want to go a little bit detail, okay, the Song Dynasty is called the School of the Principle, so-called Li Xue, okay, talking about the principle, okay. So uh, what is principle? We will deal with this one later, okay. The famous, there's a lot of the famous scholars during the time: Zhu Xi, Zhang Zai, Lu Jiu Yuan, uh, Zhou Dun Yi, Lu Jiu Yuan. There's a lot, okay, during this time, okay. And after Mongolian occupation, then they come with the Ming Dynasty. Then the continue uh, the Neo Confucianism uh, continue, but the Neo Confucianism has a little bit different than the Song period time. That's the Ming period time, which is so called the school of heart and mind. And I believe that have a strong influence from uh, Buddhism teaching. So start to teach, go look at your heart start to talk about your consciousness. So that's the time. So that's the general, very, very brief idea about the uh, uh, history of the Chinese philosophy. So all I talking about this should be set down on the background of today's uh, reading. Okay, so um, any question, any comment about this? It's quiet, okay. Okay, so uh, let me quickly introduce some books. So uh, that's also sitting in the background. I probably will spend a little bit more time uh, talking about the background of today's reading because um, uh, that requires some understanding on the background. So that will uh, help on the reading. So I think this book, uh, we just have to quickly know what it is and then uh, just ask questions. If you have no idea what the book talk about and then please uh, ask questions. So some important book, okay, that's during the time is Yi Jing, okay. So Yi Jing, I think mm, a few months ago, we talked about this one, uh, the Yi Jing, and they have a different uh, translation, somebody called Yi Jing or Book of Change, okay. So, and another one is uh, Dao De Jing, that's by uh, the different spelling, Dao De Jing or spell is D, and then somebody just called the Lao Zi is the author, and there's also a different spelling. Just you just have to know all this one means the same person. And another Taoist writing is Zhuang Zi. Okay, that's come about two hundred after Lao Zi. Uh, we we I think we already read one of the uh, article, and then when we have a chance, we can uh, introduce more. Then come with more important book, so called the four books, and because in the neo Confucian, uh, Confucianism, uh, the scholar Zhu Xi recommend, okay, and become the government uh, standard. So it's like a full textbook, okay. So first is the analyx from Confucius teaching, Mencius, okay, from Mencius teaching. So this two is most important. Then they have like two other book, much shorter, which is the chapter from uh, Li Ji, I think, okay, from a book called Li Ji. So basics, the book of the so-called great learning, I think uh, Pin also introduced this one and the doctrine of Min. So this four book become the orthodoxy, orthodoxical teaching for the Confucius. So you can see Chinese philosophy uh, being going from the hundred school of thought 
and the, to the Han Dynasty become like a Confucianism as a orthodoxy, and the, to the Song Dynasty on the government standard okay, reduced to four books, that the four orthodoxy book, okay, Analex, Mencius, the Great Learning, and the doc Doctrine of the Mean. So that, that's become like a four standard textbook after that. So, so that's about the book. So I'm going to go over all this philosophy just quickly. And then uh, if you, uh, I just to provide this one for the people to review what it is. Okay, so please ask question if you don't see, uh, don't understand of you uh, have any solution. Any comment? Okay, so let's move on. So let's quickly do this one. And uh, for the next few slides, I just want to give everyone you know, a quick review, see what, uh, what all this book about. And no, uh, I have no intention to go detail or you know, uh, too much. So basics, I will assume, assume uh, you will understand by look at this uh, uh, slide, basics, you know, so-called uh, hexagram and they have the a, they have the different yin and the yang and then put together become the, that's the yi jing that's the book okay of yi jing so i think we introduced this one before and just kind of review on what is yi jing that's a book talk about all these 64 uh hexagram and they have the mystical interpretation moral interpretation metaphysical interpretation and then if you are interested we can go over uh, have a special meetup talk about this one. Okay, so that's the uh, book they have okay, during that time. And uh, during the Han Dynasty start to develop more on the so-called naturalism. So, you know, they have the theory of yin yang. I think everybody see this symbol. Okay, that's, that's this kind of concept. Uh, probably start earlier okay, than Han, but in Han, they start to spend more time or more scholars start to talk about this and the so-called fire element. Okay, so the wood, fire, earth, metal, and the water. So this line basically means they can uh, grow each other, right? Water will grow wood, uh, wood will grow from water. Fire will, uh, wood can generate the fire. Fire, you know, after fire extinction, they have earth. If, if during the earth, is inside the earth, you can find the metal. And the metal melted, become water. And the water uh, will, uh, will, 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 uh, will grow, uh, will nurture, uh, will nurture the wood, okay? And wood will become fire. And that's the way to grow. And each one will kill each other. So water will distinguish fire, fire will, will melt metal. Metal can cut the wood, wood will, or wood will block the earth, okay? The earth can block the water. So they have like uh, generate each other and they kill each other. So that's become a um, basic mystical or you want to call it the metaphysical theory behind the scene. So this one start to get the popular, uh, get this, uh, systemized during the Han Dynasty and the, uh, the, the all the scholars know all, all this thing and the, the uh, Chinese medicine, a lot of things also based on this metaphysical thinking, okay, yin and yang, and uh, the five element, and all put together one, they generally help each other, they cure each other, they, you know, so that's the series behind the scene, that's happened during the Han series. So, question, any comment, any question? Yeah, quick comment. I remember last time we talked about uh, the five elements, there were some confusion about earth. Uh, so I just want to clarify, earth is more in the context of soil, yeah, not yeah. earth as, as an entire planet. Yeah, that's about, uh, because, the, yeah, it's more on the soil. If you think about earth as the globe, then that's totally going to, so uh, uh, soil would be more uh, proper term on the translation. Yeah, thank you, Peter. So, I, can, I, can excuse, I can excuse the, uh, the idea of fire creating earth. I mean, you have the, uh, the energy in the stars. Uh, we know that now. We know that the energy of the stars created earth. Um, we know that energy and matter are 
interchangeable cosmically. So uh, there is a modern relationship there. But this uh, metal to water, has there been any, that's inexcusable. So is there, is there kind of like, uh, you know, it's true, you can have liquid metal and you can have liquid water. And of course, they're practically the same thing. And, uh, but they're not, they're, they're completely different, constitu constituated completely differently chemically. So, so how do we excuse this mistake? Have there been any papers kind of like uh, trying to expose the weak links of the uh, yin yang philosophy uh, in, the, in the five elements? I, I don't see that. I think any here weak water weak. just um, more represents the liquid state of matter. A lot of uh, <laughs> Chinese, ancient Chinese is descriptive and conceptual. So water just means uh, things that are fluid. But any liquid anything else doesn't help wood. It's only water that helps wood. So the, the, the chain is broken either way you look at it. There's, there's kind of like, in other words, from a modern perspective, since we know that there's no relationship between metals in the atomic series and metals as we, they were even called at the time probably of uh, Lao Zhu, the, there's, there's, there's most likely no, um, there's no, um, uh, relationship well, here other than the state, uh... the state, the state of matter, and the state of matter doesn't hold because metal doesn't interact with water except to contain it, and water doesn't um, doesn't uh, water interacts with wood, but uh, uranium or some other kind of metal would not necessarily interact with wood in that state in that kind of way. Yeah, um, uh, James. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that, that, that's the scientific experiment, but the Chinese talk about the basics is talk about the face or representative, the idea of metal. So uh, yes, it's not uh, uh, sustainable by the today's point of view, but I just have to, today's point of view is just present what is, is, is a, 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 if you want to argue on the, Scientific point of view actually is not sustainable. I I 100% I agree. But uh, that's the that's what happened during the Han Dynasty. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I would, no, uh, exactly I, would I, I, li I like these old philosophies, but I would sort of like create a separation there. Oh yeah, say, we can all. They were they were partly right, but there's a separation right here. Yeah. yeah. So basically, it's a that, that's what the, at the time people were thinking, and then. And I will not say they are stupid and not know, you know, the, the metal, the water general from the metal is a different water liquid than the liquid used for drinking. I believe they, they understand that. But uh, you have to, in Chinese philosophy, have very different, Chinese always think about try to uniform and make everything unite together. So uh, uh, actually, unlike more on the Western, more on the critical side, okay, it's like think about, mm, in some cases, you want to work, but the, especially the ancient Chinese, more intent to think about how to make it work instead of a question, why, or in some case, it doesn't work. Okay. So I think that's the reason behind that. Yes, and one comment. Yeah, please. Uh, so, if you see the old ancient Indian scriptures, uh -huh. like which is like five thousand year old, the same thing is mentioned in a different way. Five elements. They say fire. Oh yeah, I know that. Fire. <laughs> yeah, air. So like air, earth, earth and fire and uh, water are there, but two two elements which are which are different. Yeah, there's no uh, uh, air, 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 no air. Space. Yeah. Space and air. Yeah, uh, earth and the space. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And also Greek also have a four elements. Okay. And if we add the ether, that's another one. So it's not uh, I think I have a slide, you know, many months ago we compare Indian, uh, Greek, and uh, uh, Chinese together. Okay, so uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, we have a lot of hands up and uh, and I don't have the intention to have further discuss on this one because it's controversial and another thing is uh, just like the James talk about it, it cannot sustain okay you cannot sustain can I just oh, say something real quick uh who pin okay please yeah. yeah 
Yeah, I, I mean, James is correct, of course. Oh, yeah, of but course. I just want to clarify once and for all this. We're talking about philosophy, not science. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think it's quite obvious when you try to categorize a universe into five elements or sure. five whatever is is not, you know, it's not science. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, wanted, I, yeah. Yeah. So, my, so my, yeah, let, we can move on from this. This five elements also, it's um, because we shouldn't overemphasize it even as a philosophy. Uh, yeah, basically, I want to say that's it. Okay. So uh, yeah. that's the yeah. five elements. Okay. It is not so, worth uh, that much discussion. Yeah. yeah. I only, I, I just want to quickly show in case somebody don't know, you know, what's five elements. Okay. So that's it. So uh, lower your hand if you are not. You are uh, you are you 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 want to talk of this one, okay? So I have a few people hands up, okay? So uh, I don't have an intention to discuss too much on this, but you know, uh, on, I I would suggest ask question, okay? Rubena, you are the only one qualified to ask question, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, just the slide before the I Ching or I Ching, I do, I, I I Ching, I, yes, yes. Is that like part of the Chinese uh, uh, astrology? Like you the, can say this one partially, partially, yes. Okay. Like the, the, I believe the original purpose is the for the predict what's going on. So a lot of time that, that's I believe the original people use this one to uh for example, I'm going to the war. Okay, so you know you try to do it and then figure out oh it's good to go to the war or not go to the war. Okay, so uh, should I do something? Should I promote? A, B, C, which one should become my prime minister? I probably do this one to figure out, you know? So uh, I, I think that's, uh, it, it, the understanding is correct. And, but they also have a metaphysical meaning. They also have the moral teaching on that. That's the people add on later. So uh, ooh, ooh, that, that, that's the uh, quick answer to you, yeah. Uh, Claudia, please. Yes, uh, this diagram you currently have on display, I, I believe it's, it, it pertains to the Book of Changes, right? Um, uh, so it has some, uh, met, has metaphysical elements, it appears, right? About, I guess, some type of ultimate reality about life. Yes. So yes. I'm guessing in, in relation to Confucianism, um, uh, the uh, traditional Confucianism, not Neo-Confucianism, I, I believe did not really embrace the metaphysical realm. I, I don't think it entailed the Book of Changes, correct? Uh, I, I, although Confucius was interested in the Book of Changes, it wasn't really part of his uh, teachings, was it? So I'm wondering, because according to this reading, the assigned reading, it appears that um, Neo-Confucianism and Neo-Daoism, the kind of, kind of like, and then some kind of a collaboration, and Neo-Confucianism is becoming kind of more metaphysical, so did it? Uh, it did Neo Confucianism embrace the Book of Changes? Is it was it part of their uh, philosophy or not? Uh, thank you, Claudia. You know, I'm very happy you asked this question. That means you, uh, I post the right paper. Okay, that's exactly the question I want to people to ask. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. Okay, <laughs> you read the paper and the. <laughs> And then uh, I think you read it correctly. Okay, thank you so much. I'm very happy on this question. <laughs> uh, I would say Confucius is not totally reject I Ching because if you read the today's I Ching, they have the Confucius comment on that. And the Confucius also said, uh, after you become turn 50s, then you can study, uh, you can start to study I Ching. So in other words, I Ching is so difficult only for the people over 50 years old to study. So that's the part. And the Confucian really said that he the interest to talk about the afterworld, talk about God, talk about ghost. That's true. But the Neo-Confucians start to talk about, try to combine, okay, the Yi Jing uh, as a metaphysical background for the uh, Confucius theory. Okay, that's the paper we are going to discuss later. So uh, just a summary, quick summary like this. Uh, thank, thank you for asking this question. Okay. Uh, we have a James, Pin, and the Mark. Okay, James, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say something about the I Ching. It seems <laughs> to me that it, it is a metaphysical, um, you know, system of some sort because it's based on the idea of uh, change, right? 
a change mm -hmm. and also on being. So it's, if you, uh, you know, uh, are familiar with some philosophies, uh, these are the basic questions about, uh, you know, uh, the ultimate uh, um, principles of the universe is based upon the idea of change and permanence and the idea of one and the many. Yep. And it incorporates the uh, yin and yang, right? The, the polarity of opposites, you know, operating in the, and so I think that's why maybe uh, Confucius, you know, some of the major uh, philosophers are interested in using, relying on the I Ching as a kind of a foundation for their, um, you know, uh, social philosophy, that it is a kind of a metaphysics uh, understanding of oneself in relation to the universe, to the, to nature. Yeah. yeah, thank you, James. I, I think it, I, 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 I agree, and then that, that's well, in my opinion that, that that's correct. And then uh, it remind me about the name of Yi Jing. People sometimes change the book of change, and actually it's not proper, right? Because Yi in Chinese probably has three meaning. It means a change. It means a permanent. Okay. It also means uh, easy. Okay. So Yi Jing basics not just talking about change. We talk about the change. Talk about being and they talk about easy, okay? The, the ease, okay? And pin, mark, and the method, pin, please. Yes, I just want to follow up on um, Claudio's excellent question because it points to a very, very common misconception that Yi Jing is not part of Confucianism. It absolutely mm -hmm. is. Yi Jing is one of the five basically sacred books of Confucianism right from the start. Uh, Confucius loved Yi Jin. Another quote from him is that uh, if heaven get, uh, is willing to give me a few more years, I will spend those years studying Yi Jin. Yeah. <laughs> and also uh, Confucianists claim that all the 10 annotations uh, of Yi Jin were written by Confucius himself. Uh, whether that's true or not uh, is besides the matter is that this is how how much they revered uh, this book. So Yi Jing is an essential part of Confuci Confucianism. And in fact, probably almost all the schools of thought in the ancient times do revere, uh, did re revere Yi Jing. Uh, so it's kind of the grand grandmother of uh, Chinese philosophy, if you will. Yeah, that, that's that's true. Though. Yeah, he, he, uh, who is next? Okay, Mark and the Madeline. Mark, please. Yeah. Um, were there any? Um, actually, I have two questions. Okay. The please. first one is: Were there, were there any um, schools of ancient Chinese philosophy that rejected the I Ching? That you know. Uh, well, uh, okay. That that's my opinion. Okay, uh, Chinese philosopher usually are not interested to reject something. Okay, uh, I I will, I can think about people like Xunzi. Okay, that's one of the uh, Confucius and uh, a scholar who, if you just quickly remind, who believe the human nature is bad. Okay, so his writing he re usually reject the heaven. Okay, he he's not saying reject heaven, he just said the message from the heaven, it doesn't count, okay? Everything is on you, okay? That, I think that's the way. way. And the Moism, I don't see he, he talk about Yi Jing at all, okay? And at least I don't read this part. Even he believe divine, he believe ghost, okay? I talk about Moism, Mo, 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 Moji, okay? The, the, the other friend. So uh, I don't see anybody uh, strongly say, okay, Yi Jing is wrong. Okay, so uh, uh, I, we don't see that. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's all correct though. So <laughs> just have to say that. Uh, Madeline, please. Yes, um, I appreciate that you're right now, you're just reviewing in the early part of the session, yeah. uh, things we've discussed before at various meetups, uh, the different elements, uh, the trigrams, things like that. So we're kind of going through the basic concepts we've discussed before, and then we're going to talk about the paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, that's why I don't want to last too long. I just want to make sure you know everybody in the same page. Yeah. Yeah. So let's not all get stuck on the details of of each individual because this is just the prelude. Yeah. So basically, I want people to ask questions, not say your opinion. Okay. Please. Okay. 
So I want to make sure everybody understand. I don't want you going forward and feel like, you know, okay. So uh, Rubina, please. I was just curious, how much of these um, quotes that King or you um, um, talk about that Confucius has said is really, he has said it or has been added much later. Is there any way to know if he really said that if he, he would study I Ching for the rest of his life or was it someone else who came later and added Okay, Pin, can you have a quick answer to uh, Rubana? It is uh, written later by his students or students of his students, but it's fairly reliable, you know, as far as these things go, right? Something 2000 years, uh, more 2,500 years ago. Um, it's not like the fortune cookies. Okay, so in the, in the West, there is a lot of sayings like Confucius said this, Confucius said that, uh, I think 90, more than 90% of them Confucius never said. But uh, the quote that uh, Jason and I have uh, referenced are directly from the book of Analects, which are written by his students or most of them by his students' students. So at least, you know, not, not too far off uh, in history from his own time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mark, you had the last question about eating. Oh yeah, actually my question wasn't about Yijing. We, we'll just skip me for now. Why don't you just move on? Okay, thank you. Let's move on. Okay, next four section, okay, is also pre, uh, preview, but a little bit more important. So uh, basics, I'm going to talk about Confucianism, Neo-Confucianism, uh, Taoism, and the Neo-Taoism, okay? And I find out, the, um, of course, it's very difficult to define, but I find out the Wikipedia with some alteration, I think, pretty much capture the idea. So let's give a quick lesson, okay, for the, this full school, Confucianism, Neo-Confucianism, Taoism, Neo-Taoism. I get a quick review so we can move to the paper. The paper is not long, but if we have this one clear, I think it should be easy to understand the, uh, uh, the, 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 the paper. And the- J J Jason, sorry to interrupt. Alex yeah. says she can't, she doesn't, her uh, raise hand function disappeared. Is it, did you accidentally block her or maybe she can use another symbol to when Alex, she wants to speak. You cannot raise hand? Uh, I'm sorry, I think I just found it. Um, okay, great. Okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, uh, Confucianism. Okay, based on, that's the, I copy this one and the modify from uh, Wikipedia. What are you gonna make? <laughs> nice selection. Okay. Can you mute yourself or something? Somebody, let me mute. Okay. okay, Confucianism. Okay, so Confucian developed from, okay, we know that from the Confucius uh, time. And the, okay, I think this sentence is important. The worldly concern of Confucianism rests on the belief that human beings are fundamentally good. This, this one is not, very, not necessarily true because Xunzi, okay, believes human is human nature is bad, okay? So, but basically they all agree is people, human are teachable, improvable, and perfectible. I think the perfectable is important because uh, Confucius asks people to pursue perfection, okay? So that's a very key difference. And especially through self-cultivation, self-creation. Confucian thought focus on the cultivation of virtue in the moral organized world. That means the foundation is a morally organized world. The society, the basic assumption is the society is a, a, a hierarchical society, organized society. So everything is working in this way. And they have the many key virtual teaching, okay? Ren, which is benevolence, humanness. Okay, we're not going to talk too much detail on this one. I just give an idea. We have a whole section talk about Ren and still have a lot of people complain or say that I still don't understand what's the meaning of Ren. Okay, so we run another section talk about. And E, that's another big section we can talk about duty, righteousness and upholding the righteousness for the moral disposition to do good. And the D, that's also important. Uh, ritual, 
adequate, okay, assistant or ritual norm to proprietary to some, okay, so basically, and wisdom, I think that's the only part people have no problem to tell what's good, what's bad. And the xiao, that's another concept. I do have a plan to have a section talk about xiao. I think it's in Confucius, the second book, talking about xiao, which is uh, filial piety, filial obedience. And that's not all correct translation. It's a little bit different. So I think if you read the, the book two, the second book of uh, Confucius uh, Analect, the most of the Analect, uh, the, the, the book two is talking about the concept of xiao. So that's about quick, like two minutes review on the Confucian. Okay, that's the basic teaching. Okay, let's move on to the near Confucius. And then the, the key is that's no, a little bit different, the subtle difference, okay, between Confucius and the near Confucius. Okay. So near Confucius, I also copy from Wikipedia. I think it's pretty good. So near Confucianism. There's a different name, okay? So if you read other paper article, sometimes they call Song Min Di Xue, okay? Li, that's L, okay? Li, li xue, okay? Or sometimes shorten as Di Xue, L-I-X-U-E, okay? That means the school of principle. This Di is not the, the this Di, okay? And the, this Di, that's different, okay? This Di means principle. And the, the other Confucius teaching, the means adequate ritual. Okay, so that's a school of principle. Okay, it's moral, ethical, metaphysical Chinese philosophy influenced by Confucianism. Okay, because uh, become prominent during the Song and the Ming Dynasty under the name, uh, under the formulation of Zhu Xi. Okay, so basics. That's the quick definition of what's the Confucianism. Neo-Confucianism uh, have been an attempt to create a moral rationalist uh, and a secular, fun, a secular form of Confucianism by rejecting superstitious and the mystic, uh, mystical elements of Taoism and the Buddhism that they influenced Confucianism during the Han Dynasty. So basics, we can see this movement is a, uh, rationalism movement, okay, for the Confucianism, okay. So basic, the basics on the Confucian teaching and then uh, the idea is to reject the superstition, okay, and the mystical element of Taoism and the Buddhism, okay. So, uh, but the turnout, okay, when you read the paper, you will start to under, to realize even they reject the Buddhism and the Taoism, but turn out they accept a lot of Buddhism thinking and the Taoism thinking. So uh, I hope the purpose of here is not to go too deep on the Neo-Confucianism. The purpose here is I expect everyone read from the previous slide and this slide, get the sense of the difference between Neo-Confucianism and the Confucianism. That's a little bit different, a little bit like when we talk about Platoism, okay, Plato and the Neo-Platoism, okay. So that's uh, the subtle difference. And another way to look at the Neo-Confucianism is uh, think about the Thomas Aquinas, okay. He put the metaphysical background or he used the uh, Arist Aristotelian uh, philosophy with the, uh, to interpret uh, Christian teach, okay. So that's kind of movement happening during the uh, the tenth century. Uh, we have a question from Alex. Yeah, I um, was in another uh, class. I mean, meet up uh, about Confucianism, and uh, in the beginning, if you if we go back to the last slide that you have, um, the the uh, these five principles. That Confucians talk about um, do not they do not explain uh, the human spirit, and I believe that uh, from the other lecture that I attended was that uh, in order in order to sustain Confucianism, and times are changing, people are becoming more and more self aware of their sp uh, spirituality, and uh, 
in order to, for Confucian to, to really incorporate into the society, as well as for people to, you know, make it more popular. Um, and, 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 and so, so actually that's why they started to, you know, try to find a way to incorporate uh, Taoism into, into Confucian, into Confucianism, um, so that to sustain um, the, the, the philosophy, because uh, one of the, one of the biggest um, defect of Confucianism is that it does not provide uh, any spiritual um, reasons or, or principles of, of the inner self. And I think either they start to realize this, you know, they have to overcome this deficiency and start taking uh, the Taoists and to incorporate the Taoist principles, because otherwise, um, you know, people are starting to wonder about the spirituality and, 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 and that, you know, just the, the old confusions and was not able to explain that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alex. It's pretty good summary. Uh, pin, please. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, yeah, Alex raised a very interesting point. I, I would differ a little bit. I would say that's why Mencius was very important uh, as regarded as maybe the person with, that would really made Confucianism um, last four thousands of years. Uh, that. And this cross-pollination, as I was reading the essay between Taoism and Confucianism, I think really started from earlier, much earlier from uh, Mencius, which uh, who is um, a couple of hundred years after, only a couple of hundred years after Confucius, that during this time of the hundred schools, they all had to debate each other. And, um, and, um, so, uh, okay, so that's just some thoughts, but originally I raised my hands to say that, you know, as so often it, the irony of um, life and history is here you say they, um, that this is a create a more rationalist and secular form of Confucianism. I would say the irony is that uh, because of the efforts of some of the prominent neo-Confucianists like Zhu Xi, uh, they were really the people that made Confucianism into uh, a state-sponsored theology. And um, so there's the, the other side of that, that the, it, it did not be, they, their efforts did not make Confucianism more secular actually they made it more into a state-sponsored religion that um, try to control the thoughts of the masses for a thousand years after. And um, another thing is that they, as you pointed out, they were they had they were inspired a lot by Taoism and Buddhism, and then they turned around and attacked those two schools. That's uh, uh, my my personal uh, dislike for, <laughs> yeah, for neo confucianism it, Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's that's the social um, uh, yeah, the influence of that. That's another subject we should discuss next time. Today we just want to focus on yeah, the, yeah. the uh, the philosophy on it. The philosophy may not be bad, but uh, so I, I agree with Pin the social impact. Okay, and the result is very, well, in my opinion, in opinion, I his opinion, we hate it. So, but you know, let's look at the, the philosophy. But but I do agree. There's a lot of great things about the philosophy. The philosophy yeah, is we, we have to more than the, the after effect. <laughs> yeah, the after effect is a different story. Okay, so yeah. let's look at what's what's the movement going on. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, please. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Um. So. Ping brought up actually something relevant to what I was going to ask before. Um, so maybe it's pertinent. Um, so I was just wondering if um, somebody wanted to give, like, this might be difficult because it's, it's difficult in, in European history too, but kind of a, a succinct dividing line between, between ancient Chinese philosophy and religion. Like, how would you distinguish the two? 
like in Texas, that I've seen in the United States, a lot of times Confucianism and Taoism are listed as religions. But, you know, now we're talking about other philosophy. But I know you have the same problem to a certain extent in the ancient world, in the Mediterranean as well. But I'm wondering, how would you guys make that distinction, like when you use those terms philosophy or religion? Okay, uh, Mark, um, thank you for asking this question. You know, um, it's a big question. And then uh, I just have a quick, quick, get a quick, quick answer on that. I think that because um, uh, first is, uh, I think the reason is the way of the Chinese reading the text, okay, or philosophy, the attitude. Uh, Chinese scholar read as a revelation, okay not as a philosophy, okay? So basically try to understand what the ancient text talking about, not critical or criticize what ancient, I think that's the reason uh, being put in the theology instead of uh, philosophy, okay? That, that's my personal uh, understanding. But the fact is most of the school, university, put the Chinese philosophy in theology Okay, not in philosophy school. So that's the fact, yeah. Or well, what's the reason we, we can discuss later. So let's finish up. Uh, Pin, you have something about this? We you're are on mute, here. you're mute. No? Thank you, yeah, yeah, I just wanna add real at the same time, it, it's hard to also classify these ancient uh, Chinese philosophies as religion because there's little talk about, well, it really depends on what, you know, the question of what is religion. So if you say religion is a school of thought that, talk, that emphasizes what happens in the afterlife and who created the, the world, then these the ancient Chinese philosophies typically uh, do not have an emphasis on those two aspects. They may touch on that here and there, but they're uh, not really central themes. Uh, so, I, 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 in a way, I think religion or philosophy are artificial distinctions that we create in more modern times, right? I think we just need to look at these things and study them as what they are and not try too hard to categorize them. Okay, let's put this question on the side and uh, we have to move on. So I quickly show this one. Uh, that's the famous uh, scholar called Zhou Dun Yi. Okay, he probably, I'm not sure he's the first one or nothing, but he famously, he start to put together, okay, uh, the, uh, uh, as a Confucian scholar, okay, start to put, try to, put the, uh, you can see this one, he put the yin yang, okay? And put the five element and then put all together and try to explain, give the uh, metaphysical uh, 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 reasoning or background for the Confucian's moral teaching. Okay, that's his effort to try to do. Okay, so uh, uh, that I just want to show, I'm, I'm not going to go detail on this one. You can see this one, that's the five element. Okay, he put, and this one is yin and the yang. Okay, so he put all together and he has another picture and I don't want to go to too much detail on this one. He has another drawing about like yin and the yang and become like a four element and, uh, and also, so that's what he is doing you know, uh, during that time about uh, the 10th century. Okay, so we're done with the, difference between uh, Confucianism and uh, Neo-Confucianism. Okay, sometimes we call it Li uh, Xue uh, or called the Xin Xue, okay, or Song Min, that's what we're talking about. So uh, I assume, okay, let's move on. So next two slides, I'm going to talk about the Taoism and the Neo-Taoism, okay, again, the purpose is not too much your own opinion about Taoism, Neo-Taoism, but basically we would like to know is the difference between Taoism and the Neo-Taoism. So they will make, uh, when we read the paper, will make more sense when we read the paper. So again, I copy from the um, uh, Wikipedia. So basics you talk about Tao is talking about the way the Chinese Tao, some the different spelling, the way Tao with D or T, somebody spell as Taoism with T, 
someone still is D with Taoism, they all the same. Okay. And then in my slide, I use the old style, use T as Taoism. Sometimes I don't include the parentheses, just, you just have to know we are talking about the same thing. The major teaching is about the Tao, about the the, the virtue, okay. Or talk about so-called the Wu Wei, or no action, okay. So we don't want to talk too much on this one, but basics, that's the teaching in the Taoism teaching. And another Taoism, uh, Taoism are important is the Zhuangzi. Zhuangzi is 200 years after Laozi, and he write a lot of uh, story. I think uh, Pin also introduced one of them, and we are going to go more about the uh, 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 Zhuangzi's writing. So basics, that's the Taoism teacher. Okay. So anybody, I just assume you, I, I think Taoism probably more, most of people understand what's Taoism. So let's move on for what is near Taoism. Okay. Near Taoism happened during the Wei Jin period of time. So that's about 200 CE to about 500 CE during this period of time. So this one, I like to spend a little bit more time on that because um, this period of time and this philosophy, I think, in my opinion, uh, usually being underestimated and being misrepresented, okay, for the most of us scattered uh, in China, Asia, and, the, and the, around the world, okay. So let me read the uh, definition from Wikipedia. They, okay, the name, okay. I, I prefer the name called Neo Taoism, okay, or Neo Taoism with T with a D. But a lot of um, paper, okay, call it the Xuan Xue, okay. So they call it usually the most popular name is Xuan Xue. The word Xuan means mystical or profound, okay. So I don't like this name because it's easily to mislead to the religious uh, Taoism, mislead to the uh, something mystical, okay? So I like to focus on the metaphysical and the social aspect on the neo Taoism. So let me read, the Xuan Xue is a metaphysical post-classical Chinese philosophy from Wei Jin period, okay? Bring together Taoism, Confucian belief through revision and the discussion, okay? So they revise and the, the, the different of during this time, they have a lot of debate. They discuss, okay? So they kind of like disagree each other. They try to figure out the different meaning okay, of the ancient text. Xuan Xue come to rain spring in cultural circle. It's not just the uh, scholar writing, it's a social movement, okay? So I think they are, that's, this, this one is my own opinion. I think they have the three key points during this uh, neo Taoism. Basically, it's liberated from the social norms, okay? So these people, they are scholars, they are kind of aristocratic. So I would consider, consider them as uh, aristocratic rebel, okay, or intellectual rebel. They kind of like against the social norm, okay? And they promote liberty, they promote the individualism. So that's the very unique situation happened in uh, Chinese philosophy period of time. And the, the, in general, the, I, I talk about in general in the textbook, okay, or most of people will consider this one is not so good movement because these people are individualism. They being associated with selfish. And the reason they have this one, they kind of like, Mm, because the, during this period of time, the country is not united. There's a lot of war, okay, a lot of corruption in the government. So Confucians criticize for this kind of movement is they are selfish and they are not to their social responsible. So they kind of like only enjoy yourself and not care about the uh, government, not care about the society. So being considered as Bad example, but I think okay, uh, neo Taoism is uh, one of a unique movement because that's probably the only time in China or Chinese history have the movement about the liberty, freedom, uh, individualism, and um, that's been ignored for uh, for thousand years. So that's my own opinion. 
But basics I would like to uh, everyone to take is uh, the difference between Taoism and the Neo Taoism. Okay, so the Neo Taoism kind of like uh, uh, go deep to what the ancient text talking about and bring it to the social level and kind of like perform in the individual level. So that's the, it's not pure academic and not associated with government. It's more on the uh, uh, social movement, but only in the cultural circle, not in the uh, uh, regular people. So that's I have to talk about for the, this, uh, uh, Taoism and the neo Taoism. So, any question, any comment before we move on to the real text? It's not that long, it's simple, but the background is a little bit difficult. That's why uh, I would prefer to spend more time on the background talking and then go to the main point of the paper. No question, no comment? Okay. How many people have their hands up? Do anybody have hands up? Oh, sorry. Alex and Madeline. Okay, sorry, sorry, I didn't see it. Okay, Alex and the member. Alex, please. Yeah, just a quick comment. So, so basically the um, Taoism and Neo-Taoism, the biggest difference is that I think uh, from what you said, Taoism is more about the world and how the world affects, you know, uh, uh, the society, the people and how people should um, kind of internalize uh, uh, spirituality. And then and the Neo-Taoism becomes more, um, almost like uh, more common, more easier for people to understand about themselves and their relationship to, to what's happening around them. Let's say, you know, um, if your loved one all of a sudden something bad happens or something is, you know, they, they, they will use Taoism, you will neo Taoism to try to explain what happens in their lives. And then they would use Confucianism or Neo-Confucianism when it comes to business or when it comes to how to react, how to uh, behave with others, so, such as your parents, you know, the relationship part. Um, so I think, I, I, I think, is that correct, my understanding? <laughs> Um, well, I think you you come. Well, that's my 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 comment to you. I think uh, you come is more on the difference between Confucianism and uh, Taoism, but the uh, but the difference between Taoism and Neo Taoism is more on the uh, Taoism kind of. I I that's what I think. Okay, I'm not thinking about who who is correct because it's it's a very deep question okay but because my personal preference and my personal reading i will see neo taoism is systemize systemize the taoism teaching okay put in the whole system and bring up uh, the uh, so a dialectical method okay because the big difference during this neo Taoism time is they have a lot of debate among the scholars, okay? So they have, they kind of set up like today's debate game. Or they have set certain format, certain way to debate, okay? But the funny thing is the way they debate is not just like the language. They talk about language, they talk about the clothes you wear, the guest, the guest gesture you use, okay, the tone you use, they're also important. Okay, so that's an interesting time because during that time, you know, people, the scholar doesn't see there's a good potential to work for government. They are rich, they, they have nothing to do. So they spend a lot of time discussing um, the Taoism and they try to bring Confucian together. Okay, so that's my opinion, but you know, I'm not saying who is right, who is wrong, but basically that's uh, I think about this. One. I should have a few sections talk about neo Taoism because I think that's a very interesting uh, subject. Uh, Madeline, please. Yes. Um, it's just a very quick technical issue that I have. There is this moving tree image on my screen that's totally distracting to me. So if we can ask Mark to turn off the camera, that would be great. Who, who turned off? I think Mark is walking and the trees are shaking on my okay, screen. Really, okay, so, really okay, hold on. I'm going to mute all. Okay, now. Okay, so uh, Madeline, please. 
you have to unmute yourself. Yes, uh, it's a quick question. If you could go back a couple of slides to the one with So Dan Yi. So Dan Yi. Yes. Okay. So Dan Yi, sorry. Uh, yes. The red circle, is that representing uh, the void or some sort of metaphysical Buddhist concept of uh, transcendent illumination? Uh, no, but I'm not going to answer this question now because I don't know. <laughs> and, and this <laughs> okay. I randomly pick up to show how you do it. I have no interest, or at least for today, I'm not going okay. to the detail. Yeah, thank you for paying attention. <laughs> uh, 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 James, I think James is the next one, right, James? Listen, yeah, I, um, I missed the part where you talked about um, individualism. Was that a, uh, did you say it was an offshoot of uh, neo-Daoism? Okay, so yes, okay, individualism, I think that's my, my based on my personal reading, okay. Um, uh, if you kind of look in the Wikipedia, they're probably not talking about this part, but I think that they put more on the individual style. I think the paper is talking about the, he call it a, a personage, okay? So basically you want to build your own personal style, all right? So, and they start to recognize the individual, okay? But the individualism probably different in today's view of individualism. The individualism probably means the 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 in inside the cultural group, okay, the 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 aristocrat, okay, not the common people. Okay. I don't see they go to the common people talk about yes, Mr. Blah blah blah, you you are individual, blah blah. I don't think it's this way, but at least in their circle, they focus on individual and oh. the free. Okay. Uh, pin and because I, I I was associating that with uh, with going back to Zhuangzi. Zhuangzi was a, a kind yes, of yes 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 kind of associated with Zhuangzi. That's right. Very correct. Thank you. Uh, uh, pin, please. Uh, uh, yes, I, inspired uh, by a couple of the questions, uh, the one we just heard, and Alex, I just want to maybe make make an attempt to answer them a different way. Um, so with Alex's question, yeah, yeah Taoism, uh, you know, Lao Tzu founded, uh, well, generally regarded as the founder of Taoism. So Lao Tzu's book still would talk a lot about society, what the what what he envisioned the the perfect society should be, and how a leader should be. So he still had a lot of concern for society and leadership, whereas Zhuang Zi. Uh, basically completely just focused on individualism, uh, individual, personal, um, spiritual liberation. So the, the neo-Daoists are uh, basically inherent and extension, in, in my opinion, mainly uh, focused on Zhuangzi's school of Taoism, on uh, individual uh, liberation. So that, that's kind of the, the, the difference there, uh, or the, the evolution. Um, oh, now regarding uh, Madeline's question, uh, can, can we go back to that slide of Zhou Dunyi? The circle, okay. Yeah, yeah, I believe the circle represents Wu Ji, because uh, Yin yeah. Yi Jin says Wu Ji gave birth to Tai Ji, Tai Ji gave birth to Liang, Liang Yi, the Yin and Yan. So Wu Ji uh, literally translation means without bound, or without, Ji uh, means either bound or extremes. So without bound, and then Tai Chi means, uh, or in English we say Tai Chi. Tai Chi means the greatest bound. So that's the greatest extent. Uh, and then Tai, so, so Yi Jin said, the Wu Ji, the, the without bound gave birth to the, the greatest bound. And the greatest bound gave birth to Yin and Yang, and so on and so forth. Yeah, that, that's a lot to talk about, yeah, because that's from Wu Ji to Tai Ji, Tai Ji to, to, to two, two becomes four. Then four, four becomes, yeah. yeah, so that's a yeah. key point. Yeah, he has a chart on that. So <clears throat> that's not today's subject, but basically yeah. we just want to let everybody know they start to work on, that's the area, okay? The near Confucius is start to working up. So uh, Fred, please. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering that we set up originally Taoism 
and Confucianism as an exclusionary choice, as as a, as sort of a not polar opposites, but to, to be distinguished from each other. Neo Taoism uh, seems to to wed these together in some sense. So I'm wondering <coughs> whether um, it is um, possible, or was it the practice? a common practice to actually adopt both of those um, Taoism in terms of uh, the an exploration of an individual ex metaphysical exploration and Confucianism as a more of a public facing social regulatory system. I mean, in the same way that, for example, Buddhism can can be adopted as a methodology uh, in conjunction with another religion or belief system, rather than in, in opposition to it. Um, can it, uh, or was it uh, practical to adopt Taoism as an individual uh, methodology while retaining Confucianism or Neo-Confucianism as a more public facing uh, way of behavior. Uh, thank you for your uh, uh, question, but that's the common, um, the common answer is the Chinese and uh, all so-called the uh, eclecticism, right? So basics, uh, just like I think the Alex talk about it in the working day, you are Confucianism, in the weekend you are Taoism, when you are, uh, uh, successful in the business, you try to be the Confucianism as possible. When you retire, you become the Taoism. Okay, so I think that's the uh, so Chinese are not so on the distinguish between choose between uh, schools used to combine together. And during this one, you the, this few slide you probably see. Okay, the Neo Taoism movement it try to include Confucianism and the Neo-Confucianism and try to include Neo-Taoism. And then even they said they want to reject uh, Buddhism, reject the Neo-Taoism, but turn out that some of them also bring in. If you, if you look at the later part of Neo-Confucianism, they have a lot of Buddhism flavor inside. So that's a complex question, but basics, that's, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah uh, Pins, please. Yeah, yeah, great question. Very perceptive. I totally agree with Jason's answer. Is uh, I just want to emphasize, I yeah, yeah it, it, the Chinese are both. I think exactly. We we assimilate. Both schools are equally influential in every uh, in people's thinking. Uh, and the same, even if we pick the prominent neo Confucianist or the neo Confucianist statesman. Uh, you read their creative literature, they celebrate Taoism. And they, in their personal lives, they, they, they totally adopt, um, you know, their, their, the, the Taoist philosophy is in, embedded uh, in their thinking and, and views of life. And so uh, so it's just, uh, I'm basically repeating what Jason said. Okay, great. Let's uh, move on the real paper. Okay, but you know, I think that, that that's with my plan with 15 minutes today. So it's not too bad. So, uh, okay, so this paper, uh, we've seen talking about all the big one. Uh, is anybody want to talk about this paper? You know, as a starting, okay, like, you know, uh, you read this one, how do you think about this paper? Right now you have some background on that. And then is and then anybody want to, just give a quick review or quick opinion about this paper. No? Okay, so let's move on. <laughs> okay, so basically this paper talking about, let's I summarize and then um, I make sure it's, uh, so I think right now, I assume, okay, right now the paper should become very clear what the paper talking about. So first he put a three point, uh, okay. Uh, basically the author tried to set up is Neo-Confucianism inherit a lot from Neo-Taoism, okay? So he lists three different themes and the third one has the three points, okay? 
that's I try to summarize, make it simple. It may not be 100% correct, but that's our number. So first thing they are common is both are focused, are talking about the uh, intrinsic logic of the life world, spiritual world, and the personality idea. Okay, so that's the both. Neo-Confucianism and uh, Neo-Taoism are doing the same thing because Neo-Confucian learn from Neo-Taoism, but they have some difference. Second point, they start to talking about the idea of body, mind, and the nature and the principle, which is being studied to mention during the Neo-Taoism movement. And after about 1,000 years later, oh, 500 years later, the Song Dynasty, the Neo-Confucian start to use the same way, talk about the body, mind, and the nature and the principle, this kind of dualism, uh, the, uh, and with the different way. So that's the second point. Number three, I think that's important. Basics, Neo-Confucianism, okay, uh, start to use the method, the tech, the way uh, of the textual interpretation used by Neo-Taoism, okay, to do the following three things. First, they start to do some philo uh, philosophical argument. Okay? Instead of just the commentary of the ancient text, they start go deeper to the philo philosophical argument to go to deeper meaning. Okay, I'm talking about few pure uh, uh, the, 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 on the scholar point of view. Okay, that, that's the first point. Second, they start to develop the new idea from the uh, ancient text. So for example, principle, okay? So like new, new, new ideas like nature, okay? Which is human nature, emotion, oh, sorry, the misspell, emotion, okay? And the principle, inner sagehood, all these terms are not mentioned or not focused in the ancient text, but they start to develop the new idea from the ancient text. Number three, both ne uh, Neo-Confucianism uh, continue from Neo Taoism. They bring the uh, I Jing okay, to the table. They put the I Jing as a metaphysical background for their theory. Okay, so that's the author try to set up you know, for the, end, uh, the movement. So basics on the paper, on the surface, look like Neo Confucianism is rejecting Neo Taoism. But the, in the author's opinion, the Neo-Confucianism try to do actually is inherit what Neo-Taoism has been done, okay, 500 years ago, and then bring it back to the Neo-Confucianism teaching. Okay, so I think that's the author try to uh, set up on this paper. So uh, any comment, any question, any opinion on that? Right now we are in the main dish, okay, yeah. but. Uh, uh, you can have more idea if you read the paper or you disagree with what I'm, I summarize, that's, that's great to bring up, but that's, I, 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 that's what I read from this paper. Uh, Claudia, please. Yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, do you have any idea what brought about these changes? Was it the political environment? Uh, yeah. Was it? A war or, you know, yeah. what? Yes, the, okay, that's not today's subject. I'll just give you a quick answer that they want to make China great again. Okay, so <laughs> the long story is Song Dynasty. If you know, actually Song Dynasty is not a united China, just Chinese claim it's united. But if you look at the map, Song Dynasty only a very small territory in China. At that time, the world, the Chinese land world is interna very international. They have the China on the north, they have uh, and they call it so-called Qitan, okay? Then become the, become the uh, Manchurian, then become Mongolian. On the west, so-called Xixia, okay? That's another group, okay? So basically they have the three major uh, kingdom, okay? Fighting together or cooperate together. So that's a very, you know, and then culture-wise, they have the Buddhism become part popular. So, during that time, you know, they had a lot of movement. So they try to think about the culture. So that's another long history. And then if you look at the time, 
the neo Confucianism is about 600, 700 years. Okay, so I'm just quickly summarizing these 600 years. But in the Western Europe history, you can see how long of his 600 years you can put like 100 people you know, between this 600. So it's difficult to summarize just one sentence. But what I'm saying, to, uh, uh, trying to do is just get a quick, but not so accurate okay, review on that. Right. Thank you for your question. Uh, we have uh, Madeline and uh, TC and uh, Jim. Okay, Madeline, please. Yes, uh, my question is based on the paper. Okay, please. Um, it, uh, I see here on this slide, we're looking at um, internal sagehood. It seemed that the paper uh, talked about two different, I mean, we all have a sort of idiosyncratic inner voice as well as cultural norms that we follow. And the uh, paper seemed to be talking about two sort of idealized versions of this. One was the, uh, the neo-Daoist, uh, who would be the um, somewhat of an individualist um, with, a, with a spiritual bent. And the neo-Confucianist would be more of the, uh, the sage in terms of being a, a ruler and interacting with other people. Do I have that? Do I have that approximately right? I think you are you summarized very, very well. And I, my question to you is why didn't you summarize at the beginning? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know so much and you are not. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much you know, I, uh, for sharing. So I, I, I can skip for the next two slides. Thank you. Uh, uh, next one is uh, TC, please. I, so can you expound on, because in each point, logic is used, and I suppose my understanding of logic is, you know, Venn diagrams and Cartesian me mechanistic thinking, and so it seems, you know, mutually exclusive, say, from personality ideal, it, it seems like it's much more causal, so can, can, can you expound on exactly what the term logic means? Uh, well, I probably cannot uh, explain now, you know, because it is difficult. I just can have to say the logic, when we say logic, it probably means rational, rationality, okay? Uh, and then I've been, some people may know, I've been working on the Taoism, uh, the Tao Te Ching translation with the uh, 52 uh, uh, live ideas on every Tuesday. Uh, I, I get involved in the so-called logic, Chinese logic. It's very different than when you talk about non-contradiction, sufficient reason, syllogism, you know, deduction, reduction, that's all different. Okay, that's the only thing I have to say, but you know, sorry, I cannot go further, but I just have to say that's different. Okay, you, if you want to put a general, that's called rationality, okay, uh, rationalism. Okay, so you just think, okay, and through argument. Uh, James? Sorry, I think uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I took an American history course and I, and I, I, I they, they sort of, I think in the American history, I mean, the world history course, they, 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 they said that um, the, um, uh, this was kind of like the neo-Confucianism was kind of forced by the influence of Christianity and then um, later Buddhism, I suppose. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like, I didn't read the article, unfortunately, uh, but I just want to try this out as a question. You know, is this, this sort of like um, a, um, a rejection of these, these, these uh, religious tendencies and the development, uh, a, a sort of a strengthening of the uh, traditional arguments for uh, Chinese, China, for the Chinese uh, uh, behaviors and uh, native native ideologies, such as uh, um, the, uh, the 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 uh, Confucian school and the Taoist school. Um, yeah, I think so you that that's correct. That that in a way it's correct, but I just have to rephrase it. The starting point is try to reject the Buddhism. Okay, that's very famous from the Han Yu. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
okay? Right. Invite uh, the dark, uh, uh, ah. ancestors to reject Buddhism, okay? He want to go back to original Confucius, okay? That's very correct. But how much influence on that? Then for the next 600 years, actually, I, in my opinion, they probably accept more Buddhism than uh, reject Buddhism. Okay, but I'm talking about the Buddhism is talking about the philosophical part of Buddhism, not talking about religious part of Buddhism. So that's the, the it's, it's complex and that we, we need a lot further discuss to be, to make it clear. So today we just want to get, I think today's purpose is we want uh, people attend today have the idea of Neo-Confucianism, Neo-Taoism, and they are different, some are different, some are similar. Okay, so you got your own idea, so. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, next few slides, I'm going to the detail on each one. Okay, so, uh, so first, talk about the first point, talk about the personal style. Okay, I think Madeline uh, uh, mentioned about the personal idea. So basically to the personal, so you will see the different way to look at. In the neo uh, Taoism, they are looking at in the Wei Jin, they talk about personality, a personage, okay? Some translation will call it the celebrity, okay? So basically that's in the cultural circle, okay? They value the meaning and the, uh, they value the, meaning, uh, the value of individual existence, attach great importance to the accession of people's inner spiritual uh, realm pursues an elegant and a carefree personal lifestyle. I think that's important. They want to live an elegant and carefree personal lifestyle, transcending the distinction of things. Okay, so basically they focus on the extent on the individuality, highly praising freedom and enjoying life. Okay, so that's their personal style. Okay, so that's in the Taoism. If you compare to what near Confucianism, they inherit what near Taoism is teaching about the individualized personality. Okay, near Confucian doing instead of a carefree or uh, enjoy life, they put a moral and the social sense on that. So Neo-Confucianism scholar pursue a sage-like way of behavior that is free and serene, okay? So that time they start to teach the ancient sage. They start to teach everybody can be the sage, okay? So everybody, as long as you work. So the famous talking is Sun, Yao and the Sun. If you remember in the ancient text when Confucius teach it, keep talking about highly praised Yao and the Sun as an ancient sage, as the role model, as the best we can do. So during this time, Neo-Confucian, okay, start to learn from Neo-Taoism, individualized. They talk about, yes, Yao and the Sun, they even the ancient uh, sage, they are people, they are not God. So same as me, so as long as I work hard, I work in the right way. I can be like them. So that time they start to have so-called a sage-like way of behavior. So, and this way, so everybody can be the sage. Okay, so that's the different movement uh, for the Confucianism. Uh, Claudia, please. Yes, this focus, <clears throat> this focus on individualism on both sides, uh, Neo-Confucianism and Neo-Daoism. <clears throat> Uh, does that imply that the uh, traditional forms for both, they were, um, let's say, were they dogmatic, uh, hierarchical, and organized? Is that what it's implying? Uh, well, I, my answer is no. I think probably I mis, misrepresent or mis, uh, uh, the paper is misrepresent. Okay, so I probably need to further explain on the individualism. Okay, so this individualism is not today's individualism, probably. Uh, it doesn't mean you are going to change the social structure. That means you are working on your individual training. Okay, not talking about individual right, like 
I can do this. I can do this. Okay. Especially in the Confucian, near Confucian, they talk about individual training. Talk give individual the potential to become the sage. Okay. And the, again, instead, when you become a sage or you train yourself, focus on individual. Unlike in the Western world, with the individual study claim some right, like I can have a freedom of doing this, this, this. They are not doing this, okay? Confucius start to talk about, then I have the social responsibility, okay? I have to do this, do this, do this. So that's the key difference. If I have to make it, you know, I hope I answer your question or uh, it makes sense to you for uh, Claudia. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you explained it. Uh, I understand it better now. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot of things, very easy to misunderstand it. You know, if you didn't ask question, I would not even know, you know, they have this kind of misunderstanding. Thank you for the question. For that give me to clarify. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first point that also I want to talk about. If you want to memorize uh, to get the essence of that, so both are talking about individual person, but in the Neo Darwinian, more talk about carefree lifestyle, elegant for the individual. And the, the, that's why the Neo Darwinian has a potential to shake the social structure, but it didn't go this way. And then in the Neo Confucianism, they talk about individual trading, but it brings to the not individual right, but it brings to the individual social responsibility. Okay. To that okay, so they you will see the later writing about the neo confucian they they kind of treat themselves okay as sage kid so they they have a responsible for all the people so second point is my heart issue okay so uh this my heart issue not being clearly mentioned in the uh ancient texts, okay? So there's a two kinds of dio, uh, dualism. One is my body issue, okay? Another is nature principle issue, okay? So first, I think in the author's idea, both uh, Neo-Taoism and the Neo-Confucianism are doing the same thing, okay? Oh, on the my body and the nature uh, principle point of view. Uh, I think my body issue, I think it's not foreign for most of the people. If we know, know uh, the cause of um, my body dualism, okay. So basics, we can say they are similar. So basics, the teaching is body, mind, and the natural principle, two things. Okay, so neo Taoism appeal to our inherent nature, conform, confirm the rationality of all desire and the emotion in order to achieve a peaceful spirit and the visual body. So basic neo Taoism is use rationality. Okay. Uh, uh, basic idea is the nature, your, hum your human nature should control your uh, emotion. Okay. So neo Confucianism, take, take a further step from that. Okay, instead of just control your body, he's talking about enlarging heart. Okay, that's just kind of answer to what the Claudia's uh, question. Because in enlarging heart means your heart is not only for yourself. You start to have the social responsibility. Okay, as you have been a Confucian scholar. Okay. So that's the my body issue. Okay. Uh, uh, neo Taoism and the Neo Confucianism uh, deal with you know, during this period, period of time. And after my body, they start to deal with nature and the principle. Nature is, this issue is very similar to in the Western world about your soul and the God. Or in the Hindu philosophy, is your individual soul, the Atma, with Brahma. Okay, so basically you talk about the nature is your body, your personal issue, and the, the, the heaven, okay, which is, instead of talking heaven, they start to talk about the principle. So that's the relationship they are trying to build in the, uh, during this period of time. So in author's point of view, in the author's point of view, 
uh, both Taoism and uh, Neo Taoism and Neo Confucianism are during the same dip you know, during this time. Yeah. Uh, James, please. Yeah, you're saying that in, um, in the uh, Chinese philosophy, even up to this point, there is, there is no dualism, right, uh, of um, the way that West has this uh, kind of, uh, you know, dualism of the, um, of the mind and body, right? Because even in the language itself, the, the mind and heart are always, you know, in connected. There's no difference between the two, right? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, James. That's an issue. Uh, uh, yeah, that's an issue, subtle difference. Uh, probably I need to explain a little bit. Uh, first, my heart, okay, in Chinese, my heart, Chinese use heart, uh, use my to think, uh, use heart to think, not use my. So uh, basis during this time, they are not, Chinese are not talking about mind, they talk about heart. So when you see heart, basics is might. So I think here with what the language I use might, but the actual word is heart, okay, not might. So when I say body mind, okay, actually in the original Chinese is body and heart. Okay, so uh, thank you to mention this one. And second thing also important uh, is dualism. The concept of dualism is very different from the Western world of dualism. I think it's more similar to Hindu's dualism. Okay. The difference is when uh, Western world talk about dualism, we are talking about dichotomy. Okay. So mind, body are separate. Okay. When we talk about God, our soul and the God are separate. They have the creation, they have the creator. They are totally separate. But in Chinese, I believe same as in uh, Hindus, when we talk about dualism, we are not talking about separate. We talk about unite, okay? So my body, we talk about the mind control body, okay? When we talk about the uh, nature and the principle or talk about individual and the heaven, we talk about we will connect together, we unite together. So uh, the concept of dualism is very different in the Eastern world and the Western world. Okay. So I think that's the thing we need to a little, pay a little bit of attention on this. Uh, Madeline, please. Thank you, Jason. This is a very beautiful and healing philosophy, uh, especially for our times. What, <laughs> I'm, what I'm thinking of is uh, just this, this past Tuesday evening in the Tao Te Ching meetup on 52 Living Ideas. Uh, I think that we got to a chapter in the Tao that someone was talking about, I think Aman was talking about, um, as being how to apply it in life and in society, and that we were kind of moving into a phase of the Tao Te Ching that dealt with that. I, I wasn't as, as focused in that group as I usually am, so I may have misinterpreted it. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's a different concept of the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 what is that, my dualism. Okay, so my, uh, we, we can have a further discuss on this one, but uh, today we just make sure we understand they have the difference. Okay, so three points of the uh, method of the text interpretation. Okay, so I will consider first, let, let me quickly move this one, then we can uh, summarize for the inter uh, uh, the discussion. So uh, the author put a three point on the uh, text interpretation. First, that's a, uh, I just summarized with one sentence. It talks about national, uh, rationalism movement. Basically is try to use, uh, instead of uh, reject the Han dynasty, okay, commentary tradition, okay. Uh, that's the neo Taoism is doing, they reject the Han dynasties uh, commentary tradition. They use the philosophical connotation of class and classics and their own philosophical view. In other words, they start to put their philosophical view to the ancient text. And they have the argument of speech and idea and they bring it to the higher level of the uh, philosophical speculation on substance and the function. So that's what the Neo-Taoism is doing. And the same way, Neo-Confucianists start to 
work in the same way. They give their own philosophical idea instead of just you know, put the commentary. They, that's a new method. So Pin and I, before we talk about how bad, how terrible of the neo-Confucianism movement to the social on the social side, because after that, the Chinese society become extremely conservative. But in another view, the method of their interpretation is very advanced. Okay. Basically what they are doing is they start to put their own idea okay, in the ancient text, give the different meaning on that. So I can see that's a great movement, just like Western enlightenment. But unfortunately, it doesn't go to the Western way. In China, it go to the other way, become ultra conservative. But why going this way? That's another question we can discuss. But if you pure look at the philosophical and the scholar point, forget about the social impact. This kind of movement is very similar to the Western movement of the indictment. People start to put you a new idea, use the ancient text to interpret you with your own philosophical idea on that. So that's the first point uh, also I want to point out. Second one, after you're doing this one, they have the new idea come out. Okay, Space, here I focus on the uh, analects. So the concept of the nature, which is a human tendency. Okay, the heavenly principle, instead of talking about heaven, they talk about heavenly principle. So kind of combine heaven and the Taoism Tao together. They start talking about your nature can control your emotion. Okay, so this idea has been kind of mentioned, but not very clear in the ancient text, especially in the Confucius analects. But during this time, start to bring out. So that's the not a new concept coming out during this period of time. So that's the second thing come out from the Neo-Confucius. Uh, Joe, please. Yeah, actually, can you expand upon as to why it became conservative versus more enlightening? Just a little bit on that. Okay, uh, yeah, I can make a quick quick comment on that. One important thing is the government because uh, Confucius uh, uh, tradition, all the scholar, only way to become a scholar, uh, the reason to become a scholar to study is work for government. So all these people, this great for government, and uh, you all know, uh, uh, you all know China has a long history of the testing system. Okay, so they start to put all this great teaching in the test. So kind of like I invented a great teaching. Then I force everybody to learn my great lesson for next thousand years. Okay, then that's the, and they put in the practice. So that means they make a big progress, but they stop there for the next thousand years and even get the narrower and the narrower. So I think that's the problem. So the problem of the sacrifice for the widow, okay, praise the virgin, okay. So I think even the Western world also praise the virgin, but the problem of the Chinese virgin is different because you are not virgin, you are in sin, okay. So that's a, a all kind of this kind of uh, situation start to happen. So I think that's another uh, uh, a problem that you quickly to answer your question, <laughs> uh, Alex. Yeah, it sounds to me uh, like uh, the Neo-Confucianism, even though they um, try to take uh, Taoism, try to uh, into the Neo-Confucianism, but I, I feel that the, this part, like the internal sagehood, the, the, the emotions, Neo-Taoism is still put in, it's not, this is not the, their main emphasis. There's still emphasis on social structures, on respecting your 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 king and and respecting your parents and that your emotions, uh, I think I you know from what I'm reading, for neo Confucianism is still taking a backseat. It's it's not. It's that like for them, it's the the so, the social relationship is more important than your personal emotions. Am I correct? 
I think in general it's correct because and it's difficult to say it's correct or not correct. Remember what we are dealing now is 600 years of philosophy, right? So if you think of in the Western world, if you put the 600 years in any period of time, you can see how many things, how different happen. So uh, I'm quickly generalized the 600 years philosophy teaching here. So any statement is correct. Any statement I can find the way to argue against. So that's the thing I talk, uh, talk about, unless it's totally wrong. So I think that's in general, I agree, you know, and a lot of focus on like, when your parent, when your father or mother die, you have the mom for three years and the data become like, if you have the kids was born between the second year and the fourth year, of your parents die, you are in trouble. You have to send to jail. That means you have sex during these three years. So a lot of things happen during this time. So there's a good impact and a bad impact it really depend on how are you going to uh, look at this one. So uh, we would, I would like to quickly finish the last part. Okay, so make sure I finish the paper. Okay, uh, Madeline, please. Yes, uh, well, I don't want to hold things up. So if this is going to hold things up, don't answer my question. Uh, the second bullet point, exploring the meanings of nature and heavenly principle. Um, so what is meant by nature here? Um, it controls emotions and is, and so that would be nature uh, in us or us as a manifestation of nature and then nature outside of us um, sort of in the self and other category uh, is a human character and has metaphysical transcendence? Um, I'm not sure how to answer this one in the short way, and I'm not sure I have a correct answer. Let's put it in the discussion and later on, but basically, okay. Okay, the, um, uh, that, that, let's move on for the, I think. Okay, the last part is simple, okay. Basis both uh, because uh, near Taoism start to put the uh, 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 Yijin to the picture, okay, and series take Yijin to combine with the Taoism teaching, and so basically I consider that they give the Yijin a different interpretation. Uh, the, they also call it the rationalistic theoretical interpretation of Yijin. I think that's the right word, okay, during that time. Okay, so they start to, instead of think about like uh, astrology, okay, they start to more seriously talk about, remember the Yijin have, how many have 64? Each one have six. So that's a 384, you know, different line. Okay, so-called Yao. So they have the uh, 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 cultural group. Okay, they discussing, okay, each one by each one for every day. Okay, so they try to figure out, you know, just like 52 living ideas, they want to talk, discuss one uh, hexagram, okay, once a day for 64 days, and each one to discuss, debate, okay, so that's the way they start to, you know, dive deep on the ancient text. And the same as uh, uh, Neo-Confucianism, okay, so they do the, so finally they talk about the uh, I, I think we, we, we can end up here. So both conf neo Confucianism and the neo Taoism are uh, using I Ching as their metaphysical background. Okay, so that's uh, that's conclude. Okay, today basics. I think we we finish the paper. Okay, except the last word they call the Kong Yan De Chu, so called the uh, seeking a sage-like mind and the, the happiness of Confucius and the Yan Hui. Okay, uh, Yan Hui is Confucius, the best student. He's so poor, died early at 32 years old, but they claim Confucius and Yan Hui are happy. So uh, important message here. Let me conclude one more slide on this one. This is that's the last word. So make sure you know, nobody will complain. I didn't finish this paper. So the last word talk about the, the Chinese word, the Kong Yan De Chu. Okay, let's talk about happiness. The Neo-Confucian happiness, okay. This is Confucius style and the Yan Hui style. Based on the Confucius analogs, okay. The word is the happiness of Confucius. 
in his eager that this one is talking about Confucius because the student, okay, uh, uh, describe what kind of person of Confucius. Okay, so that's the thing. As a near Confucian, you need to learn. Okay, so he he means Confucius. In his eager pursuit of knowledge, he forgets his food. In the happiness of its attainment, he forgets his sorrows. And he does not perceive that old age is coming on. So he study, enjoy study, and forget that he already turning old. So that's kind of the happiness of Confucius. Okay. The happiness of Yan Hui, Confucius' best student. With a bowl of rice and a cup of drink, and living in his mean narrow street, that's Yan Hui, okay, while others could, not, uh, could, uh, could find it undurably depression, to Hui's happiness, it make no difference at all. Okay, so this two, this kind of happiness is the kind of happiness they are looking for. So let's conclude for today's meeting, and then I hope you know it's not too boring, and everybody learned something, and then. Question, comment? Definitely a lot to study. It sounds uh, very interesting, interesting uh, period in Chinese philosophy. I think that, like a good student like James, I suggest you to read the paper. <laughs> yeah, the paper. I, I, think, I, I think if uh, after uh, today's uh, section, if you pay attention, uh, the best way is read the paper one more time. I think this paper is pretty good. In, in my opinion, it's um, pretty good. Good summary. Jason, you quoted, you uh, sorry, PC, I, I cannot hear you. Papers. I thought they were basically just 